good afternoon everybody good afternoon I, yeah i hope everybody is in a good health now because our uh, iso 13485 uh, audit has completed and our certificate is on the way so we have to really uh, you know uh, pat ourselves and move ahead uh, it's not that we have received the certificate and now our job role is over you know it's not like that so now our responsibility has increased you know to keep the same uh, you know uh, uh, system in place it should be the continuous you know the continuous training continuous evaluation continuous risk management continuous kappa everything should be continuous and that's how uh, this quality management systems uh, tells about it so today uh, we are going to discuss about training and its effectiveness because this nc was very important uh, for us and uh, auditor has pointed out you know uh, some uh, sample database the objective evidence you must have seen and based on which uh, we thought to consider this as a first topic when we start our training program so as i said uh, training is uh, very important and its effectiveness should be seen throughout the organization when we train our employees okay so we are going to discuss about the importance of training why the employee needs training you know so first though we are aware of importance of training everybody is aware of but still we you know sometimes we are lazy we do not uh, respect time like we do not give sufficient time to train ourselves to train others you know the train the trainers and so on because right from the day one when we started the project i used to say you know train the trainer train the trainer you know once you are trained you have to train others so training is very very important uh, because it represents a good opportunity for employees to grow their knowledge base and improve their job skills to become more effective in the workplace despite the cost of training for employees the return on investment is immense if it is consistent as i said consistency is very very important when we talk about validation when we talk about the consistency of you know the job the consistency of the skills the consistency of training so everywhere uh, uh, people uh, needs a consistent result the consistency and that's why uh, of course to have that consistency uh, we should have the investment also you know training is not easy so though we have internal trainer we have to appoint external training as well we have to send our employees for external training or we have to or uh, invite external trainers to train them sometimes see on job skill training uh, induction training it is okay it is given by our own company but what about others like iso 13485 internal auditor risk assessment validation kappa all these topics are not uh, you know taught uh, by internal trainer so it is always advisable to invite external trainer who has thorough knowledge who have faced so many audits and who are in a position to train you so training uh, as i said it's very important it improves skills and knowledge and employee training program how robust you make it helps to improve the knowledge and skills of employees to match the various changes in the industry and this improvement will positively affect the productivity of workers which can increase the profits and efficiency of an organization and some of the training uh, you know some of the thing employee may learn through training which includes work ethics human relations and safety then training is not just important to any company it is vital how the brain how the heart is vital organ of our body if you consider human anatomy and physiology we give most important you know to the heart and the brain of our body if heart and brain would not have been functioning what will happen the person will die like that you should give the importance to training you know so, so for any company training is a vital 
So although there are many categories of training such as management training and or sales training, employees with project management skill are important asset to any organization. But what does training and development means to your organization? So training presents a prime opportunity to expand the knowledge of knowledge base of all employees, but many employers in the current climate find development opportunities expensive. So some people find that training, uh, you know, the development of their employees uh, and getting an opportunity is become expensive. But, you know, employees attending training session also miss out on work time, which may delay the completion of projects. So sometimes what happens, we try to adjust within our employees, whatever we have hired, though they have knowledge or not, we are not just uh, care about it. We are not worried and we just give, uh, you know, task or some duties which are not relevant to their uh, profession, their degree, their, you know, the, the job skills or experience. But we try to uh, get it done from them. So uh, this has, you know, uh, then disadvantage as well. Then project gets delayed. Uh, you know, there are potential drawbacks also because what happens if the people uh, working in a particular area, they don't have the subject knowledge. But since their superiors have told them to work on this this project they are you know working so that is not a good uh, you know that would be beneficial to the organization in long run and that's the reason you know in a particular area we have to assign people with particular knowledge degree experience and so on so again the cost you know when when you have to invest into training and you know the people of course the cost matters a lot but it will be a worthwhile investment i'm telling you <clears throat> because the output which you will be getting from that experienced person or the educated people would be more different than you know whatever you are expecting from the unskilled people or the existing people to whom you are assigned those tasks and your huge time will be saved so the return on investment is guaranteed you know so that's how the training and development of employees really, uh, you know, uh, a very good investment, I would say, and it, is, it won't become a barrier to any company. So uh, what are the benefits of training? Improved employee performance. The employee who receives the necessary training is more able to perform in their job. The training will give the employee a greater understanding of their responsibilities within their role and in turn build their confidence. Of course, the confidence is very important uh, about uh, you know any type of work to handle uh, the leadership quality, the team building, and there are so many other things required. You know, apart from the attitude and behavior, confidence also matters. When we face the audit, con confidence will uh, you know will half win the half the battle. So uh, that's how this confidence will enhance their <clears throat> overall performance and this can only benefit to the company. And employees who are competent and on top changing industry standards help your company hold a position as a leader and strong competitor within the industry. So improved employee performance uh, is uh, one of the benefit. The second benefit is improved employee satisfaction and morale. If you keep uh, training your employees, uh, you know, on different topics, the employee will also feel very uh, proud of, very much satisfied from inside. If you stop him, you know, learning, training, then he would not retain for a long time. I'm telling you, I have, we have seen so many organizations, you know, there is attrition rate, huge attrition rate. Why? Because people are not satisfied there is no job satisfaction there is no motivation there is no support so that is why the investment in training that a company makes shows employees that they are valued so they themselves feel like we are valued to the organization if they are hired they are taking care of us by all means you know the training creates a supportive workplace employees may gain access to training they wouldn't have otherwise known about or sought out themselves so employees who feel appreciated and challenged through training opportunities may feel more satisfaction towards their job. So then addressing weakness. Of course, most employees will have some weaknesses or the other in their workplace, right? 
so uh, some people are very good in uh, certain skills some people are not some people are very intelligent i have seen but they are unable to express they are poor in their communication skill so try to understand their need the need analysis right if he is very intelligent he has brilliant ideas he can work hard he is very sincere but he is unable to express himself he is unable to communicate try to give him training for the communication skill there are two types of communication non verbal communication verbal communication try to make him understand you know if you are unable to speak there is a way that is non verbal communication you can write you know and you can explain so that's how you should groom your people a development program brings all employees to a higher level so they all have similar skills and knowledge this helps reduce any weak links within company who rely heavily on others to complete basic work tasks you know that is why most of the people are struggling to get a job done you know on the uh, given timelines and they are unable to meet their milestone the goals why because of people who are not working on time who are producing you know wrong result wrong output and the time is wasted money is wasted everything is wasted correct so that's how uh, we have to invest in training and you know skilling our people so providing the necessary training creates an overall knowledgeable staff with employees who can take over for one another as needed so when one is absent another can be helpful to perform mm-hmm. that task or the work or the work on teams or the work independently without constant help or supervision from others so we have to train people in such a way that he reaches from level 1 to level 6 wherein supervision is not required he himself or she herself can handle the task so that's how you know ad- how you address the weaknesses of employee that is up to the organization that is up to his supervisor his boss then come to consistency so so consistency word is very popular and very important in pharma and medical devices okay so the robust training and the development program ensures that employees have a consistent experience and background knowledge the consistency is particularly relevant for the company's basic policy and the procedure all employees need to be aware of the expectations and the procedures within the company and increase efficiencies in processes results in financial gain of the company it's pretty straight forward uh, para i have given i have read for you if you have any question do let us know you, you can stop me in between and i will explain with more examples so consistently i have given enough example earlier as well consider the mcdonald example where the uh, you know burger patty and uh, the french fries are prepared even if you go to hyderabad branch visakhapatnam branch maharashtra gujarat telangana wherever you go mcdonalds or the dominos pizza where you get you will see the consistency in the taste the quality the size the packing and everything why because they have validated those batches they have validated the formula and their people are trained you know so that's how the consistency should be this is a pretty simple example which i have quoted uh, apart from there are 100 examples to quote so there are other benefits also increase productivity and adherence to the quality standards of course productivity usually increases when a company implements training courses increase efficiency in processes will ensure project success which in turn will improve the company turnover and the potential market share and increase innovation in new strategies and the products so ongoing training and upskilling of the workforce can encourage creativity new ideas can be formed as a direct result of training and development then reduced employee turnover so staff are more likely to feel valued if they are invested in and therefore less likely to change employers employers the organization and training and development is seen is an additional company benefit recruitment costs therefore go down due to staff retention as i said so many companies have attrition rates so high why because of people are not retained so how the retention policy is how you can retain them please involve them please engage them in such a way that they will feel themselves valued they will feel themselves 
I'm the you know important person for this company and my company many activities are dependent on me so I should not leave this company the person should feel like that you know uh, that uh, people are dependent on me and I should uh, you know give whatever I have because I'm paid so that's feeling that confidence should come within your employees then it enhances company reputation and profile. Of course, when the attrition rate is high, company is not good. People talk when people leave our one company and join other company. They always talk about the previous company experience. And they will tell other people also, you know, the, don't go to this, this company. The, the people are bad. The management is poor. The salary is given very poor like that. So... Everywhere people are the same. So don't lose your reputation or the profile in the market. So this is very strong point. You know, having a strong and successful training strategy helps to develop your employer brand and make your company a prime consideration for graduates and mid-career changes. So training also makes the company more attractive to potential new recruits who seek to improve their skills and the opportunities associated with those new skills. And if you are, you know, continuously training your employees, nobody would love to, uh, you know, leave your company and they will be very happy. So the training can be of any kind, you know, for example, on the job training, mentoring schemes, in-house training or individual, you know, training. There are uh, some part of like blending, blended training. Uh, so it, it has become very popular now, blended training. Uh, because, you know, as a company, we have a definite increase in this method of training over the last year because blended training is the effective combination of online learning and the classroom learning. So due to COVID, you must have seen that lots of training programs are going through online. Though classroom is, of course, more effective than the online, but people have started accepting it. So the blended training programs are more popular now. No, many of clients prefer their staff to learn on-site rather than attend off-site training program. So on-site learning program like the blended learning approach allow to train more people working across a larger international footprint. So this makes it much more cost effective and allows for greater process consistency. So like today also we are connecting online, right? So that more people uh, connected and get benefited out of this training. So like that, there are more 11 benefits of training employees. First, we have seen increased productivity and the performance. Of course, the uh, uh, improper skill will give always the lesser result and the poor results. So if we skill or upskill your uh, people, their knowledge and their skills will enhance. And of course, uh, the confidence and the ability will be built up and this will improve their performance. Then the uniformity of work process, when employees in a workplace are exposed to training, it helps to standardize the work process among the staff and workers will apply and follow similar procedure as a result of their exposure to similar training. So there will be uniformity of work processes when the person is trained, retrained on a typical process. Reduced wastage, right? When employees are trained, then they will learn to make good, safe, and economical use of the company's material, tools, and equipment. But before that, they should be trained, you know, how to uh, protect from the waste, how to, uh, you know, uh, work with the given material, how to take the badge by uh, using the bill of material. Don't weigh the extra material or something, don't waste. And even in cutting, chopping, or, you know, in the granulation, you can tell them that here, uh, you know, if you do uh, this task uh, in a proper manner, you can save the wastage. So that is on-job training, skill-based training uh, to reduce the wastage. Then the accidents and equipment damage will be minimized and this will help to waste low. Then the fourth benefit is reduced supervision. Of course, through training, employees should not totally eliminate the need for supervision. It can significantly reduce the need for excessive supervision in the workplace. Okay, so excessive supervision is not required. Even if you put a, a CCTV camera and people are working daily on daily basis, that is good enough to monitor. 
So no uh, excessive supervision is required. Then promoting from within. This is very important, you know, uh, when a person is working years and years within the same organization, he becomes a multi-skilled person and you can think about his promotion, you know, within the organization and uh, you do not have to search outside. So I will read for you. When an organization needs professional with new or specific skills, they don't have to go into the labor market to employ a new professional from outside sources. They can look inward and select promising staff members who can be promoted after they are trained in this set of new skills needed by the organization. So pretty simple. You can give the opportunity to the existing worker, uh, the uh, sorry, the staff, and promote him uh, to take the additional responsibility. Then improved organizational structure. When a company has an organized system of training for employees, it helps them learn in a consistent and systematic way. It also prevents the employees from learning by trial and error. Am I right? Improved organizational structure, boosted morale. Of course, employees of the organization who go through training programs will feel like they are a part of a supportive work environment and they will feel that their morale will be boosted, confidence will be boosted. Improved knowledge and policies and goals. A good training program will always help employees get acquainted with their organizational policies, quality policies, ethics, values. And that's why you must have seen the quality policy, the mission, vision are stick on the board in the, you know, the larger font size so that every day when they uh, walk into the factory or the premises where they are working, uh, can be read and understood, you know. So uh, it will uh, help you to improve their uh, knowledge into policies and the goals. What is our company's objective mission so that we can support our company, you know. Then the improved customer valuation. When employees of an organization are exposed to consistent training, it improves their skills on the job and makes them work more professionally and productively. So customers will feel the impact of this elevated services and it will improve their opinion of the organization. Then better workplace environment. Of course, the people will always talk about our work environment. That consistent training will help employees work more effectively in the workplace environment. And this brings about an atmosphere in the organization that encourages every employee to feel valued and welcome. Improved and updated technology. Of course, when we uh, purchase a new advanced technological uh, the equipment machinery people would love to learn that you know the, the, the advanced technology so because with ever changing change in technology across the industry exposure must be provided to all employees and they would love to learn about the new techniques uh, of uh, you know the advanced technology and this will of course help you to increase efficiency and productivity in the organization so after 11 benefits, uh, we would discuss about the four best practices for training and development. I hope you understood the 11 benefits. Say yes or no. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. I hope you are attentive. Yeah. Are you aware? Yeah, I'm... Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. So now we move towards four best practices for training and development. First practice you have to imbibe in our company is identify your audience and performance challenges before you begin. So before you start your training and development yeah, program, time. you have to identify yeah. your people what level they are are they level zero at level zero one two which are the department which are the people what type of training is required jot down the topic with the name name of the person his uh, strength his Amma, weakness, you know? uh, hello training so this is need analysis you know identify your audience and the performance challenges before you start your training and development program. Then create a plan for mobility, flexibility, and accessibility. What does it mean?
create a plan means of course we have also uh, prepared our plan for this training is going to start from 11th feb from this time to this time right so prepare a plan c2 mobility now suppose if we are training from unit 1 unit 2 head of phase so see the mobility that all people are available on a particular date on particular time so see to the mobility flexibility if some people have to travel from ho to the factory then see uh, they are flexible there are some uh, travel arrangements made or not the uh, instrument the projector or the everything which is available for you know training program to attain whether it is accessible the it uh, people are there or not so see to that everything is in place then leverage reach media interactive activities and an engaging script so make your presentation or the media whatever way you are going to train should be very interactive right is to keep your all people engaged they should not feel sleepy they should not feel bored you know by listening to the trainer so are you listening to me or you are feeling bored listening listening to your training program <laughs> okay so i i am keeping you engaged right yes we are engaged yeah good so make it interactive okay so th this is the way you know how you make it interactive the script written should be very nicely written very nicely uh, to be you know explained to all the trainers you know not trainers sorry the trainees attending to uh, the program the incorporate assessment to test your employees knowledge and make adjustment so suppose if there is a group of uh, 100 people and uh, coming from various uh, department then the trainer has to you know assess whether uh, and test whether the uh, employees attending the training program have sufficient knowledge on the subject if not then how i can explain in a proper way so that i can quote some example which is understood by each and every employee working in different department now why i quoted the mcdonalds and dominos pizza because it is written by all people whether he is working in manufacturing production hr you know it so like that you have to assess your audience so how to make your program very effective and it is understood by each and every employee that is up to the trainer skill and these are the four practices which you have to uh, you know implement in the organization when you become a trainer train the trainer what we say no so these are the four practices before you start your training and development program so as everyone is aware of the concept of training you know training job will never be finished as long as the organization remains in operation so training is a continuous process right from the start day one of your company operation till the end of your company so when uh, it is oper in operation the <laughs> training will never die right so when the training will die your company will also die you believe me or not but it is a fact the purpose of training is to bring about improvement in the performance of workers it includes the learning of such techniques as are required for the intelligent performance of the definite task so this is the concept of training let us see the competencies can you read the competencies defined by the needs of the workforce and on the essential knowledge skills and attitudes right okay to achieve an acceptable level of performance achieve through achieve through formal training in the classroom and through hands on field work hands on field work example batch production experience and testing of batches each competency is supported by multiple training objectives correct Yes. so competency is defined by the needs of the workforce right and our essential knowledge skills and attitude it is also called as ask ask means what attitude skills and knowledge here exactly ulta i have given you know the ksa but instead of ksa just remember ask ask okay ask is what attitude skills and knowledge knowledge yeah 
So the ask concept is very helpful uh, when we talk about the training and learning, you know, the training and development program in our company. So you can see competencies uh, coming from, you know, sometimes inputs from the employers, uh, sometimes it from the old employees, which becomes the alumni, the faculty, staff, or new joinees, students, you know. So how it goes, she can, he, you can see this pyramid, okay? So learning objective is a base, you know, the base of pyramid, learning objectives, learning activities and the learning objective. So the learning activities should be more as compared to the, you know, the learning objective. And when these are more, you become a competent, you know, when you reach to this peak, when you have, tell me when you have, Learning activities. objectives and learning activities. Am I right? But right. to meet the learning objective, there should be more of learning activities. Activity. Correct? So have you understood this right. pyramid? How it has to be understood? You can see the base, the learning activities is more fitted, right? When you go to the baseline, the activity should be more. Am I right? The learning objectives... Right. the middle but after spending so many you know more than half of the this triangle pyramid you reach, reach up to the competent level how much you can see this triangle small triangle so that's how it goes when we define the competencies so competency uh, say that a person is competent it's not you know uh, very easy I mean to say, when we tell uh, the person is a SME, subject matter expertise, when he has thorough knowledge about that subject, when he has spent 10, 15 years in the same field, then only he become a competent. Am I right? So that is how the competency is not easiest task to achieve. And once it is achieved, it will remain forever. So when we start the swimming, I will give simple example of swimming, right? So everyone must have tried the swimming or the cycling, you know, in, at their uh, uh, younger age. So how how many days does it take to have uh, to become a good swimmer? Any guess? No idea, ma'am. Huh? No idea, ma'am. So maybe six months, one year, you know, good six. swimmer, right? I'm telling about. Swimming, you can learn within a month, you know, uh, to move your hands and legs and, you know, you can swim in the swimming, small swimming pool. But to become a good swimmer, it takes years and years. Am I right? When right. you can swim in the river or the ocean, when you become a good swimmer, after spending so many years, it's not easy. Yes, you can good. swim in a swimming pool within six months. But when it comes to your river and the ocean swimming, how many days, it, how many years does it take? It depends on your practice. Am I right? Your learning right. activity, how much practice. time you spend. Correct? So for all activities yes. in that per se, how you become a cricketer, how you become a competent person in your field, that depends on your skills, your learning objectives, your learning activities. Correct? So, and the practice. And practice. Yeah, and the practice. Practice is the prime, you know, unless you practice, you cannot achieve your target. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. That is why GXP, I always say, you know, GMP, GLP, GCP, practice, good manufacturing practice, good laboratory practice good documentation practice. So practice, practice, practice. In industry, practice is very important. In our own life also, practice is very important. So competency, I hope you understood. Why training is crucial? Uh, the FDA, the Europe, and you know, there are all health authorities who have described in their guidelines. So when we refer to 21 CFR part 211.25, they have given this personal qualification, you know, the organization and personal. When we refer to European Medicinal Agency, the EMA, and the, in the directives also, they have given the training has become very important part. Even in ISO standard, they have given the training, okay? 
so each person in gmp the good manufacturing practice that also requires each person quality manufacturing engineering warehouse housekeeping contractor etc to be trained on the gmp aspect what is the area of work plus gmp experts in area of operation cgmp is current gmp a yeah? current good manufacturing practices by a qualified individual continuing basis sufficient frequency then approved training program is duties plus theory and blah by quality by production so uh, what i mean to say here that fda europe canada who our gmp everywhere training has uh, you know given under the laws under the rules and regulations so don't ignore training anywhere you know training is uh, like i as i said it's a vital part of any organization then the practical effectiveness check observing on the job written questionnaire oral interviews periodically assessment when we talk about how do we perform the effectiveness of training so in our training program also if you recollect after the training uh, we have uh, given the mcq certain set of questionnaire when we train we myself and sneha on uh, risk assessment the validation then the iso 13485 differences similarities and so on on that particular topic we have evaluated also we have jotted down 10 uh, choice the multi choice questionnaire mcq and we had given the answer and you had been asked for the selection of correct answer so that's uh, that is one way of evaluating the written questionnaire written mcq but there are like in certain cases like if your employees are not educated highly educated they are layman they are just you know first uh, sorry fifth standard or 10th standard pass so you can ask oral question oral interviews observe their job and periodically assess them that is the way how you evaluate how you showcase the effectiveness of your training then there are specialized training also like uh, suppose if you have sterile facility or oos you know out of specification or any uh, potent substance you know very important and very uh, uh, small quantity of like hormones and all such kind of uh, medical uh, drug is to be used then in that cases the specialized training program has to be given like if you might have heard baba atomic research center where the all isotopes and all studied you know the, those carries uh, you know cancer the radiation and all which uh, which is cancerous so in that cases people have to be trained uh, you know especially uh, on that aspect and there is a typical set of people will be trained and employed in that particular area in case of hormonal product also some uh, people are trained uh, for you know and the hormones are of two types male hormone and the female hormone so when we manufacture the male hormone there males are not hired the females are hired when you manufacture the female hormone like progesterone there males are hired during the manufacturing but females are not why because hormones are used for what to protect the child birth am i right so that's okay. how we have to take care of specialized training now fortunately in our case we don't have any specialized sterilization or anything so we need not to worry about specialized training but even though in future if you uh, try to uh, you know add some more products uh, in our factory and uh, see that whether that person is required specialized training or not and you keep two to three people trained and uh, you can carry out your job then before any new task quality assurance to be discussed in training needs right and the records to be maintained then uh, apart from this there are five principle of training one is participation that is involved trainees learn by doing if there is no involvement then there is no uh, you know uh, what you say the effectiveness seen out of your training you will train you will talk you will you know spend your energy 
but if there is no involvement from the participant like today i have seen all you are enthusiastically listening to me and you are a very attentive so that is called participation like involved trainees learn by doing repetition repeat ideas and concept to help people learn relevance learn better when material is meaningful right transference means to real world using simulation am i right transference means you give the real world stories to you talk about the real life examples that is called you know simulate the simulation of your program you directly you know uh, relate to your real life and that is what is transference feedback adjust training method to the audience am i right so if the audience is of different I, this i have already told you if there are 100 employees coming from different background select the examples in such a way that will suit to all the people attending our training program so these are the five principles you have to keep in mind when you train your employees then coming back to again the ask concept ask is attitude skills and knowledge okay so training is simply one of the means to fill the gaps of performance between the actual results and the expected results so this gap can be separated into three main themes that is attitude skills and knowledge everybody is with me yes yes we are with you yeah ask concept is what attitude skills and knowledge so by way of this training i am going to judge now you know all these three parameters attitude i have seen attitude of each employee is right so attitude is what tell me what is attitude do you think everywhere attitude will be helpful ellara mal solunga ba attitude is a person reaction to your act a reaction to your something correct so uh, suppose if somebody is asking and if you are showing attitude you are not answering you are ignoring what will happen that show that you have high attitude you are egoistic person am i right am i right sometimes so, it is person. it is made a misunderstanding yeah, person, yes, yeah, person can assume yeah uh, sometimes it is misunderstood sometimes the person is not understood what you are talking am i right so that is why he has kept quiet right right so in that case how you say that he has attitude or not attitude that means he is not understood so ensure that the people listening to you the people training to you to whom you are training have understood the concept okay have understood the yes. topic in depth and then only you judge whether that person has attitude or not so this ask concept is very helpful uh, you know in the organization please please try to understand in detail skills skills refer to the ability of using information and applying it in a context practical application of knowledge practical exposure and can also be inborn am i right some people must have inborn qualities inborn skills like lata mangeshkar she is singing beautifully am i right some people are actors right from the birth the acting is inbuilt some uh some people have very good handwriting some people have very good drawing they have they are artistic mind <clears throat> so of course with the practical exposure also people can uh, have that uh, skills imbibe those skills even if suppose if i am not a good dancer but with practice i can become a dancer if i have that uh if i get that exposure practical exposure am i right so, so skills we are expecting are... your dance very soon madam yeah <laughs> oh god so after getting certification you are going to call me to celebrate the party and yes, i will dance in the party you will dance so we are enjoying your dance and who will dance with me i don't dance alone oh, so you have to dance that, with me yes then it is very difficult for us so i will make Where all you me? dance i will make you all dance okay <laughs> that is my duty 
we are we are all together dance <laughs> yes yes oh, okay sir <laughs> knowledge so knowledge refers to theoretical information acquired about any subject knowledge can be learned knowledge is also required to master a field of study am i right so right. knowledge can be uh, you know we can gather from any source from literature from youtube from internet from our friends from our mother with the parents you know from any source whatever information you get you try to acquire the knowledge about subject now in particular subject like how do i manufacture medical device how do i uh, register my product to us fda so for that particular knowledge you have to acquire you have to learn the laws rules regulation then only you can have that knowledge so for that you have to refer right you have to refer to guidelines you have to refer to laws you have to refer to that website of fda.gov.com so like that you have to put your efforts to acquire some knowledge so knowledge can be learned or it can be acquired through different sources so of course when you say the person is very knowledgeable when he is master in his subject when he is master in field am i right so now people come to us uh, for the 510k for the usfda because we have done so many applications that people say that we are master in usfda like that you have to become a master in any field like we say global regulatory affair consultant gmp consultant lead auditor this uh, words are itself is you know self explained when you say that we are lead auditor when you face so many audits successfully then only you become a lead auditor am i right with 10 20 audit you cannot become a lead auditor so how the knowledge is used how you acquired how you become master in particular field that is up to you so i hope this is understood the ask concept the attitude the skills and the knowledge yeah so difficulty to develop in people now this is very difficult to how it is difficult the attitude the most difficult am i right the skills moderately difficult knowledge is easy to get am i right so this is the level of difficulty which i have described in this slide difficulty to develop in people what knowledge skills and attitude either use pronounce as ksa or ask ask okay, okay. so have you understood the meaning of this slide difficulty to develop in people so high ego people high ego people to bring them down to earth it's most difficult task most difficult task i'm telling okay so okay. when people have high attitude that means he is not easily changeable is not ready to accept your ideas is not ready to accept whatever you are saying right so that is called this person has very high attitude so how you bring their attitude to down to earth that is the most difficult task for a trainer for a auditor for a owner of company for a being a boss at your ceo level ceo level you know then those employees who have high attitude for ceo ceo everyone it's become very difficult to handle such kind of people okay so then when the people have skills but suppose low attitude and low knowledge still moderately difficult and when the people have knowledge okay and the skills then what happened tell me it becomes easy easy to handle 
so this is the difficulty in uh, handling people you know difficulty to develop in people these are the three skills which i have jotted down easy moderately difficult and the most difficult you can change as per your own experience huh? this arrow you can change as per your experience but so all, uh, always attitude is most difficult yeah so that but is what is attitude my... is always most difficult <laughs> exactly <Yeah>. so <laughs> that's how uh, i have also defined like this then training is only beneficial if it is based on an analysis of needs or requirements and designed in a way that ensures those requirements are met am i right training is only beneficial if it is based on an analysis of need or requirement you know you cannot give training on any topic or it is when it is not required right but at least you have knowledge about you know what kind of training is required by my employees when he is a gatekeeper he is a security guard what kind of training he should have at least the entry exit system the attendance record during covid he has to be aware of the temperature to be checked you know everything to be monitored whether people entering into our premises is wearing mask or uh, using hand sanitizer or not whether he is wearing street shoes so like that simple simple things he has to monitor uh, you know he has to be trained going beyond that what else he has to be trained the medical training the medical checkup the third most important safety of your company because the he is a security guard he is aware of where is the fire alarm where is the safety tool is kept when the fire is on and where the uh, medical emergency tool kit is kept when the person is injured when the accident happens so like that the need analysis the requirement of training you know you have to jot down when you make the training plan for your employees right from the gate entry till he exit now you understood when the person enters to our premises what kind of training is required you know entry exit gowning degowning production now you understood the work environment so all this comes in picture when he goes exit at the end of the day so what all facilities what all trainings required what all in work instructions are required that you have to keep in mind okay and to ensure that everything happens as per the iso standards or the applicable regulatory requirements so with this uh, only two three slides are left shall i continue or do you need break you can continue sir kirti sir and ramesh yeah, yeah. Sir, we are waiting for tv uh, it it was not yet arrived so please continue once it is arrived we will let you know madam so that we will okay. give a break okay okay great great right. so as i said uh, the learning uh, you know the need analysis is very important i have quoted one example of security guard like that you have to now start evaluating who which all departments are there in our company and who all are to be trained on what all subjects they have to be trained okay the basic training of course had to be given to each and every employee like induction training the quality objective quality policy and their on job training the medical the mock drill and all the general training should be given to each and every employee then it will be the department wise and the skill based training program and if there are any specialized skills are required the specialized training program has to be organized okay so uh, there should be a lna lna is a learning need analysis so for this you have to establish context how and why has a learning need been identified what is the purpose and intent of the learning need what is the current cost to this business okay then review cash means what review knowledge attitude skills and habits here h is added okay ask when i used to say ask so it is cash cash okay so same it is knowledge attitude skills and habits so 
cash is required for role identify gaps in current program then assess the capabilities assess current capabilities of staff against the knowledge attitude skills and habits then understand resources so develop a greater understanding of the participants the environment and available resources to inform decision regarding learning solution and then you are free to design the solution right so design the end to end learning journey that meets the learning needs so right from establishing the context review cash assess capabilities understand resources you are in a position to design the solution means you are ready to design program the learning atmosphere the training program by meeting all these requirements that is end to end training right as per the need analysis so this is very important slide you know creating a sustainable quality culture so how we deal with quality issues will make our break us or make or break us am i right so how you define your robust quality management system robust quality culture that will define your organization whether to make it happen or break it okay so this is very important slide and uh, i hope it is understood right so how you create your sustainable quality culture it's not that uh, we have to uh, give manufacture our product for one year two year down the line when there is a covid but you should see that how you can be sustainable years and years and years correct so this is very uh, pretty simple and my favorite slide uh, written by azim premji who is a very uh, great personality in india uh, you know and i he is also one of the role model for me my role models are kiran bedi and uh, our uh, abdul kalam azad and uh, you know this azim premji so these are three personalities who are role model to us for me at least so why training is crucial for ethical capacity building the real threat to business is from within right from poor ethical standards and lack of integrity that can do incalculable harm history has proven repeatedly that business ethics shared value and corporate governance determine the longevity of an enterprise am i right so many of the company you must have seen they are non ethical they are not following any integrity the data integrity lots of manipulations are done you know the lack of integrity i would say so history has proven that they don't have sustainable culture they don't have long term life and this is what you know the training is crucial for any company for long sustainability like anything else in business what is required is capacity building towards deeper ethical behavior the capacity building begins not only at the top but at the bottom also employees must know feel and be reassured about the fact that they work in an environment that is safe in every sense of the word this is very very important though it is said by as in french this sentence each sentence is very important please keep in mind they need to know that compliance is not a tick box activity correct compliance not a tick box activity that checklist has given and you have to just tick 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 that everything is compliant it's not that you know you have to be very honest you have to check it thoroughly suppose if we say temperature and humidity our limit is same but ensure that actual temperature and humidity is there and you record it your record is very important okay so they need to witness their organizations translating compliance and infusing ethical practices into everyday action like suppose if you the top boss is only tells that you just tick mark we will see in the audit you just tick mark you make the paper you make the record 
we are there to take care of company no this is high attitude wrong attitude i would say so ensure that your people have to be trained properly about your compliance system about your ethics your values your integrity of your company that is only help in capacity building yeah, in long run i'm saying they need to be empowered to tolerate unethical action in their work environment they need to appreciate the fact that business integrity standards are maintained and are directly related to the future success of the company they must realize that maintaining those standards insulates them their families and their company from the legal and social action it securitizes their livelihood suppose how we say how you are coming from which culture like whose daughter you are who uh, who is your father and mother where you train where you learned all these thing how we ask to people the culture is parents is background same way organization goes on you know the employee our employees leaves one company goes to other company they will tell the same story okay like our child one child birth takes 9 months that is what when the employee joins our company it takes minimum 9 months to 1 year to learn whole compliance system so please have patience we train them be respectful and create an environment create an environment where you can help to capacity building of the organization okay so now i will stop here because all the examples which are uh, gathered for you guys uh, about you know the gmp 21 cfr part to 11.25 the personal qualification what this cfr says about so in our medical device industry we need not to uh, you know uh, worry about this because whatever have been told whatever uh, have been uh, our system is developed the sop is prepared the documents are records are ready that is good enough to take care of this is additional information about 21 cfr part 211 okay i am going to share this presentation with you all you can read at your own convenient date and time but remember that training is vital training is crucial so don't ignore because of training deficiency you know there are lots of warning letter have been received in the pharma and the medical device industry okay so training operation written procedure training frequency education experience overall you can see 38 citation 44 citation how many uh, citations uh, are there in under fda because of training you can see how it was this is called non conformity but in this uh, pharma world we call it as deficiency in the system okay you can see the responsibility and procedure applicable to quality control unit are not in writing fully followed failure to thoroughly review unexplained discrepancies so all these discrepancies you can see regarding training cleaning sanitizing maintenance see calibration inspection checking written procedure are not established followed for cleaning and main uh, maintenance of equipment you can see there are so many citations 77 56 71 59 60 many you know these are old the number have now you know in uh, some numbers are increased some numbers are decreased so attitude skill knowledge important input for training uh, you can see this is warning letter to one of the contract manufacturers who was you know the an operator performing critical aseptic operations with exposed skin at the forehead posing an unreasonable risk of the product becoming contaminated just see aseptic means sterile area in which a person was not wearing Uh, the browning system like and his forehead forehead was exposed the forehead skin was exposed which may have contamination so how uh, the person is you know uh, the uh, sorry the discrepancy happened the warning letter has received to one of the contract manufacturer 
if you go to uh, fda site you will find all these uh, discrepancies mentioned there then operator moving very quickly in the septic area which may create unacceptable turbulence in the area and disrupt the unidirectional air flow so just see walking in that aseptic area is also to be trained if a person walk fast so the air handling unit the aseptic area is very highly you know protective of you know classes those class a b c d is defined the class our area which has you know no microbial like the classes are defined 1000 1000 10000 and 1 lakh so in that area suppose the operator is moving quickly then the air flow is also disrupting so the look at the observation given by the inspector so this is a warning letter for one of the contract manufacturer who is working in aseptic area so with this you can come to know like how uh, this gmp glp and all matters a lot the good manufacturing practice and the good laboratory practices and of course over and above the good documentation how you prepare correct right? so operators leaning half way in and out of the class 100 area so this was the class 100 area where the septic uh, filling or the operation was going on so class 100 while performing interventions over open bottles so these are the three observations given by the inspector and this was the warning letter given to the manufacturer so there are like so many you know uh, others uh, i will give this to read you and then you will understand you know how these warning letters are very critical mid size big size 483 is again analytical balance clocks are set back see established laboratory controls are not followed and data is not recorded at the time of performance this is the observation so the person has adjusted the analytical balance during weighing it was set back see in order to create falsified weight printouts that appears to be printed at the time of sample weighing so drug product test method validation data is falsified so with this weighing sample on this analytical weighing balance the data was the uh, sample was analyzed and validated so that data was you know become falsified so it's a big issue and that's the reason people have to be trained on each and every equipment instrument calibration and all compliance activities okay so there are you know so many examples quoted on uh, fda website you can browse through it and thank you for your patient hearing now if you have any question we will discuss thank you very much i hope you understood hello yes yes ma'am we understand or everybody is having tea without me so we are not having tea ah <laughs> uh, kriti sir will not have he is very attentive yeah sending uh, we are trying to send uh, tea uh, through zoom itself madam good good so how was the training that's good understood good, good understood understood so do you have any question dina and who else is there i cannot see you can switch on camera for some time if you want the entire thing is there you can see my face no no i don't know what happened today to my camera actually i have switched on <laughs> the last camera setting something is wrong in my setting i think dina you are looking like a surgeon who dina <laughs> dina is looking like a surgeon <laughs> only the gown is not uh, he did not wear the gown <laughs> if he wear the gown perfectly he will look dina like ready are sir <laughs> 
எடுத்து போட்டீங்கன்னா வேலை முடிஞ்சது I don't know what is happened, but uh, something. Sneha, you know how to... Ramesh is an IT expert. My camera is on, but I don't know how... Even I cannot I'm, see I my face. I think uh, it is done. It is done. I think... Just, yeah, you yeah. check when... Uh, in the well, top of the camera. Um, sometimes no I time. noticed, ma'am, internet is not uh, stable. Oh, is it? Because of that? Yeah. So, but you were able to hear me now, full presentation. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I am able to hear you. Okay, okay. So, one or two times it, your voice was shaking. Otherwise, it's okay. It's nice. It was okay, no? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I am uh, unclicking this top video also. It's not coming, my photo. But I could see you all. Dina is there. Uh, the conference room uh, camera, can you switch on? Uh, yes. Good, good. Good, good to see you all. Good to see you all. So, how many people have been trained today? Yeah, all the nine, nine here. Nine. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Not <laughs> <laughs> nine. Uh, so, uh, more than that. So, Monisha, uh, the, then uh, who is Deepak? Deepak I, 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 I could see. Monisha. Uh, and uh, what is his name? Uh, Dramani. Vignesh. Vignesh. Uh, have you understood? Vignesh, Vignesh is here, ma'am. Yeah, ma ah. So, have you understood, Vignesh? Vignesh. Yes, ma'am. Understand. Dina, have you understood the concept of training? <laughs> so, see, by uh, by this training, you are becoming now trainer, okay? Train the trainer. Now you have to train others. Dina, Dina, remove your mask. <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> we, we want to see your real face. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What happened? Okay, no, no. I think he cut, he he cut his mustache. So many people, so he can. Okay, okay. I thought he's looking different than when I saw him last. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but uh, he is Nina, I confirm. <laughs> <laughs> So any, any question regarding training? So we will break for five minutes and when I will go through competency matrix, the how to maintain our training records. Okay? So, okay. so you take five minutes break. I will also have my tea and then we will connect again at around 5, 4.45. Is it fine? Yes. 4.45? Yes, yes. Kirti sir, 4.45 is okay? Four forty five is fine. What? Sir, okay, sir, four forty five government. Okay.